Hello, welcome to New Center. I'm Parikshit Luthra. The government will auction lithium reserves found in Jammu and Kashmir in calendar year 2023. The Mines Ministry has written to the Jammu and Kashmir administration to appoint a transaction advisor for the auction. The government is also exploring the potential of sapphire in JNK. Remember, the Geological Survey of India discovered nearly 6 million tons of lithium in February in Jammu and Kashmir's Riasi district. This was bound to be a big discovery for India at a time when lithium is a critical mineral used in electric vehicles. Sonal Bhutra joins us now with the details. Uh, Sonal, how does India really stack up against its global peers when it comes to lithium resources, mining and processing? Well, this is an important update as far as lithium reserves in our own country are concerned. So I thought let's take it forward and talk about what the global picture is really like when it comes to lithium reserves and production as well in every country. Uh, now, in 2022, the global lithium reserves stood at 26 million tons. Now, that's a big number. Um, and if we talk about which country had how much reserve, Chile was the one which topped the list at 9.3 million tons. This is again in 2022. This was followed by Australia at 6.2, Argentina at 2.7, China. China at 2, USA at around 1 million tons, Canada similar amount 0.9 million tons, Zimbabwe, Brazil and Portugal anywhere between 0.25 to 0.3 million tons. Of course, if we put this into perspective, India's lithium reserves that the government says have been found in German Kashmir would be a big number as well. Now in terms of percentage, of course, as I said, Chile is the one which contributes the most, around 36% of global reserves, Australia at 24%, we have Argentina at 10%, China contributes 8% to global lithium reserves reserves, followed by US and Canada at 4%. And then there is others, like the other countries that I mentioned earlier, around 13%. This is about the reserves. But how much is actually produced in these different countries? While Australia stands second when it comes to global reserves in terms of lithium, it is the top producer of lithium in the world. Total capacity in terms of production share, Australia has 47% production share of lithium, followed by Chile at 30%. China has around 15%. We have Argentina at 5%, Brazil at 2%, and Zimbabwe and the others at 1%. So that's the picture as far as lithium reserves and lithium production is concerned. Now, where is lithium really used? Uh, we have been talking about higher lithium demand coming in. So most of it is used in batteries at 74% of the total consumption, followed by ceramics and glasses, lubricating greases at 3%. Then we have something like air treatment, continuous casting. So the uh, big demand that we are talking about lithium is really coming in from EVs, from the battery space. And that's why uh, this space is something that everyone is watching out for. Joining us right now is... Balvinder Kumar, former Secretary of Mines. We're also joined by Shailish Patak, Secretary General of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Uh, Mr. Kumar, if I could begin with you. The Mines Secretary today said that India would like to complete all auction of lithium reserves found in JNK by the end of this year, and a transaction advisor will soon be appointed as well. How important... An opportunity is this for India, according to you? I think this is a very rare kind of opportunity that uh, such a uh, rare mineral is uh, discovered in a huge quantity. Now the main challenge is uh, how to mine it because that is another extremely challenging area. Because so far there is a policy of, there is a composite license for exploration and uh, for mining. And uh, for deep-seated uh, mineral, uh, so far there has not been very successful exploration and, and that exploration converted into uh, mining. Hmm. So under the policy, I think uh, first uh, license is uh, granted for uh, deep-seated uh, deep uh, mineral. And then subsequently, after exploration, uh, auctions are to be carried out by the respective state government. So the challenge is twofold. Number one is uh, capacity of the states to auction, because so far this uh, auction itself is a cumbersome process, and not uh, many states are equipped to it. And the first part, uh, that is uh, uh, exploration of deep seated Because GSI has discovered that in the huge, uh, large chunk of land, 
these minerals are available but mm. but exactly at what place uh, these minerals are there that we can uh, find out only by way of uh, detailed exploration of that area so i think these are the two big challenges and i'm sure uh, when secretary mining is saying that uh, uh, that they will carry out he must have in mind the exact road map how this exploration of deep seated mineral and then subsequent auction by the state government would be carried out all right let me uh, get an industry view from mr shailesh uh, patak mr patak today a detailed report was submitted by the federation of indian chambers of commerce and industry what are some of the bottlenecks uh, because the secretary of mines uh, mr bharadwaj also pointed out today that there are a lot of policy challenges offshore mining has not taken off in india uh, exploration levels the quality of processing remains low in the country what are some of the bottlenecks and the key recommendations when it comes to mining of critical minerals rare earth minerals like lithium and others are concerned what the secretary mining said as well as what our president uh, shubhrakan pandya said who is himself from the mining industry is that lot has changed for the better in terms of the mining industry but some of the initiatives that the uh, 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 government of india uh, ministry of mines has taken play, uh, are actually getting delayed because of uh, judicial uh, uh, court cases and uh, 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 others so in terms of getting a mine operational the secretary made this point that anywhere in the world it takes a long time but can we give free package clearances for the entire mine to start and i think that's a step uh, which is very positive for our industry members thank you right uh, mr kumar coming to you when it comes to the processing of lithium where all do we need to increase our capabilities do certain policy interventions need to be done to ensure that these auctions and uh the processing of lithium the exploration of lithium post that is successful i think in all the three stages that is uh, uh, exploration mining and processing all these three things will require a uh, policy intervention and then of course implementation by the central government as well as the state hmm. because uh, as i said earlier that uh, uh, after exploration uh options would be carried out by the uh, respective uh, state as far as i know about the policy so in all these uh, three areas capacity building infrastructure support and policy interventions would be required and i think the better thing would be to uh, have a consultation with the stakeholders hmm. uh, all bigger uh, exploration uh, players can be taken into confidence their view point can be taken and then policy interventions would be needed i think uh, this is uh, extremely important in all these three stages exploration mining and then processing of mineral right uh, mr patak coming to you when we look at the china example today 58% of the world's lithium uh, china is not the leader when it comes to the lithium resource australia and chile have greater reserves but uh, when it comes to processing of lithium a majority of that happens in china and so is the case for other uh, critical minerals which go into electric vehicle batteries now when you have a case like that what are some of the incentives what are some of the policies that china has uh, or a country like united states has when it comes to processing of uh, minerals that uh, india can possibly emulate thank you for that uh, as you said uh, in fact the country wise reserves are chile and australia yeah chile and australia have more than 60% of the reserves in the world of lithium and argentina has another 10 and we need to learn from the success of other countries on what we could do better we have some case studies in this report on some success stories in other countries in in the indian context i'd say that according to the report the two states in india that have lithium the riyasi region of jammu and karnataka and we will work very closely with 
government and in, uh, industry partners and uh, 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 you know academia and research institutions to make quicker processing happen thank you right uh, mr kumar coming back to you what can we do in terms of leveraging global alliances uh, alliances with countries like australia united states an alliance under the quad in order to increase our exploration training our uh, professionals as well skilling our workforce yes you are absolutely right uh, at presently indian companies are not well equipped to carry out uh, deep seated exploration in large areas i think we need to invite uh, global companies global players for uh, deep seated exploration and for that exploration uh, already there is a policy that is a national explore national mineral exploration policy of 2016 but uh, that policy has not been so conducive because not many uh, areas have been uh, given for exploration and subsequent uh, options had taken not have not taken place so that is why i was saying that uh, we need uh, policy intervention after uh, uh, after uh, speaking to uh, concerned stakeholders especially at the global uh, players who are in the area of uh, deep seated exploration mr patak thank you so much for joining us and thanks to mr balvinder kumar as well for his views on the kind of policy interventions that would be needed in order to explore mine and process this lithium that has been discovered in jammu and kashmir all right we're going to take a short break but up next sharad pawar steps down as president of the national nationalist congress party after 24 years one must not be greedy says pawar in a emotional press conference as party workers urged him to continue more on that when we're back I'm a chameleon. It's my job to change color. But your wealth manager? Uh, well, they they sh- they they shouldn't be copying me, you know. Uh, you know that. Choose Nuvama. We only do what's right for you and your money. Nuvama. Let's do it right. हमने लिए नब्बे लाख में आपने लिए अस्सी लाख में ये सेम क्यों नहीं? क्योंकि आपके और हमारे होम सर्च ऐप सेम नहीं है जानिए प्राइस ट्रेंड्स और सही ट्रांजैक्शन प्राइसेस ऑन नाइनटी नाइन एकर्स डॉट कॉम होगी स्वीकार जेड ब्लॉक प्रीमियम अगर बत्ती अंधू ऑफिशियल प्रेयर पार्टनर डेली कैपिटल एटीन ईयर्स ऑफ ऑनरिंग एक्सलेंस इन बिजनेस लीडरशिप स्टेज दट एलोवेट पियर्स इन टू रोल मॉडल A ceremony that ignites aspiration in young achievers. A congregation where the pioneers shape our nation's future. A celebration of leadership. Standard Chartered presents 18th India Business Leader Awards in partnership with Hindustan Times. Presented by Standard Chartered. The commodity markets are in a bull run of sorts. Whenever the world moves from a recession to growth, there is a surge in demand for commodities. Where crude, sugar and metals are surging. Which commodities should be a part of your portfolio? How can you profit from the current surge in commodity prices? Has the Indian investor warmed up to commodity in their portfolios and are there enough instruments available? Get the complete lowdown on commodities. All the exclusives with analysis and experts from across the world. Commodity champions at these times. Welcome back to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. In a surprise move, Nationalist Congress Party Supremo Sharad Pawar has announced that he will step down as the party chief after 24 years. In an emotional speech during the launch of his autobiography, the 80-year-old veteran puller politician said it was necessary to take a step back after a long period in public life. The four-time Maharashtra Chief Minister suggested that a committee of senior leaders be formed to find his successor. Pawar's resignation comes amid several speculations over his nephew Ajit Pawar doing the rounds. However, his decision did not ride 
well with uh, party workers. They chanted slogans and demanded that Pawar withdraws his decision. Several party leaders broke down. So what will Pawar's move mean for the Mahavika Sagadi and who will be the next NCP chief? Joining me now to take this forward is Clyde Crasto, national spokesperson for the NCP. Mr. Crasto, thank you very much for joining us and waiting patiently. Uh, this doesn't seem to have gone down well with NCP cadres. There are reports that this was coming. Uh, Ajit Pawar had been dropping hints of jumping ship to the BJP. How will the party take this in the days to come? How is the cadre responding on the ground? It actually came as a shocker to all of us. We were like completely surprised. Uh, we all were here for a you know, book, book publication and suddenly Honorable Sharad Pawar Sahib announced that he's stepping down as president of the NCP. So, well, the card hasn't taken it well. There's a lot of emotional outpour that you can see in your visuals here, uh, if you have covered it up since the morning. And the uh, card is actually, you know, kind of requesting him to reconsider his decision, to take it back and to continue as the president of the party. But one must also remember that while saying that he's going to step down as the president of the party, he did not say that he's leaving politics, nor did he say that he's going to stop from being our leader. He's going to continue to lead us. He's going to continue to guide us and be our mentor. At the same time, he's got three more, <coughs> three more years of being the Rajya Sabha MP. So he's there with us. He's going to continue being in active politics. Mr. Power has always taught us, he said, you know, you should do 20% politics and 80% social work. And that's what he wants to continue to do. But this is the cadre. We've all grown up watching him. We've all grown up learning from him. We've learned our politics from him. We've learned political science from him. So for us, for our president to move away, it's always going to be a big uh, surprise and a shocker. So I hope he reconsiders his decision. Also, you mentioned about Mr. Ajit Pawar. You know, these kind of speculations that have been floated around in the media, these are all canards spread by maybe some section of the media to get more TRP or ratings, or the opposition here, it could be the BJP who's trying to put pressure uh, on the party because we are doing so well with the people of Maharashtra and across the country. So speculations, rumors can keep happening. Ajit Dada is very much with us. He was here this morning. He's been with us all throughout. So that actually does not work here at all. This is Mr. Power's personal decision. He just made this announcement this uh, sort of noon and we are all taken by surprise. Right. Uh, Mr. Krasto, if I may ask you about the succession, any indication from Mr. Sharad Pavar or those close to him as to who will now succeed as party president? Uh, I believe a panel of leaders has been formed to lead the party. What will be the process that is followed? And when it comes to the NCP cadre, who do they prefer, Supriya Sule or Ajit Pavar? There's absolutely no talk of any succession here. Uh, Mr. Pawar, uh, while, uh, you know, telling us that he's going to step down. He also said that, you know, there are a group of senior leaders and he mentioned all the names and these are the people who will come together and look at who will lead the party as president from here on. So the thing is, first and foremost, we are trying to pacify him and requesting him to reconsider his decision. And the second part is that if there is something of where he's not going to uh, kind of, you know, reconsider, then there is a group of people who will work on the future of as to who will actually take his place. So time will tell. We have got to wait patiently and see what happens next. Right. Uh, Mr. Krasso, talking about the political prospects of the Maha Vikas Agadi and also the NCP ahead of the 2024 general election, who can keep the party together? Who is good for the Maha Vikas Agadi? Would Ajit Pawar be able to do the job? job? The Mahavikas Agadi is together, it stays together. See, the Mahavikas Agadi is together. We are coming together on all platforms, if you see in the last uh, few years. And Mr. Pawar is our leader. He is very much a part of the Mahavikas Agadi. All he has done is step down from the post of president of the Nationalist Congress Party. But he still continues to be a leader. He still continues to be a tall leader in the Mahavika Sagadi. He is a mentor, not just of the NCP, he is also the mentor of the Mahavika Sagadi. So we are together, we are getting stronger every day, so there's nothing to worry about it at all. 
Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you that when it comes to future alliances, is there talk within the NCP of exploring a tie-up with the BJP? The case related to Shiv Sena is still in Supreme Court. Is the NCP open to any kind of tie-up with the BJP at this point? Absolutely no tie-up with the BJP. NCP will never go with the BJP. I mean, uh, they can wish, they can try all the tricks in their books that they have. But NCP is a very, very strong part of the Mahavika Sagadi. We are going to contest future elections together. We are going to fight the opposition together. And Honorable Power Sahib has always maintained that like-minded parties should come together. And therefore, the Mahavika Sagadi was formed. The NCP, the Shiv Sena and the Congress came together. So this is how it's going to be. We are going to be a strong unit. We are never going to go with the BJP. BJP is going to be our opposition and we're going to fight them as many elections as we can. Uh, finally, Mr. Krasto, very quickly, is, has Mr. Sharad Pawar come under pressure from Ajit Pawar? Nobody can put Mr. Sharad Pawar under pressure. He has a mind of his own. He is the tallest leader in this country. He is an astute politician and he knows what he is doing. I must go one step ahead and say, if he has considered to step down and say that someone else should get an opportunity, then it's a magnanimous decision on his part. It's a very, very noble and big decision on his part to step down uh, despite the fact that, you know, the Carter wants him to be leader. He's giving an opportunity to the, uh, someone else. So I think this was a big decision, magnanimous, if I have to use that word. And I think the respect for him as a leader has grown many folds today. Right. Mr. Krasto, thank you so much for joining us uh, from, the, from the venue where that announcement took place a short while back. Let's see how this big political development in Maharashtra politics pans out in the days to come. Let's move on. With a week to go for Karnataka elections, Congress party has released its manifesto. The party has announced free electricity of up to 200 units every month if they are voted to power in the state. CNN News 18's Harish Upadhyay joins us now with the latest. Harish, take us through the Congress party's manifesto. The Congress Party today released its manifesto. The manifesto has all the five major full promises or guarantees given by the Congress Party, including 200 units of free electricity to every household and also free travel for women in the state transport buses. It also promised to ban organizations like Bajrang Dal and PFI if they indulged in activities that triggered hate among communities. The Prime Minister was quick to take note of it, jump in and criticize the Congress party for the same. The Congress has also assured that it would scrap the national education policy if it comes to power and draft a special education policy for the state itself and also cleanse all the textbooks and get rid of all the changes that the BJP had brought in the syllabus for the state board. In Bengaluru, with camera person Pramod, Harish Upadhyay for CNBC TV 18. All right, thanks, uh, Harish, for joining us. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Center. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.